ABC 7's Christopher Brantley chose to share his heart scare with the ABC 7 audience so that we can learn the warning signs that aren't just associated with age. This particular condition can only be solved by a procedure called heart ablation. Heart surgery can be a frightening concept, but doctors say technology is changing that stigma. ABC 7's Adam Cellini takes us inside the operating room. After countless doctor's visits and much anticipation, the day of the procedure has arrived. Christopher and his girlfriend leave home hoping when they return, his heart will finally be beating normal. I feel okay, a little nervous ready for it to be over with. The procedure is called cardiac ablation, and it's one that's performed around 150,000 times per year in the U.S. Doctors feed a catheter through an artery near Christopher's groin and into his heart where tools can be deployed. First, the doctors perform what's called an electrophysiological study. They trigger the tachycardia and map which parts of the hearts are firing incorrectly. Using a technology which is similar to a GPS, we can uh, identify the location of the problem within a few millimeters, so without opening the heart up. If there's an abnormality, Dr. Matthew burns it off. Imagine that you have a mole on your, on your skin, and we use a cautery to take the mole off. The same um, you know, analogy applies here. The risk is low, significantly lower than open heart surgery, but no one will be at ease until all the tubes are removed. It doesn't make a difference to me that they're going through the leg or opening his chest. Someone's going to tinker with my baby's heart. For an hour and a half, Dr. Matthew tinkers, searching Christopher's heart while his family waits anxiously for good news. I'm confident that. Um, there's a good chance that he can finally get this problem taken care of once and for all. But when Christopher is woken up, he's told doctors were unable to provoke a reaction. As a result, they can't locate where his heart is misfiring. The procedure was not successful. I felt totally defeated because I've gone through what is not terribly invasive but is painful nonetheless, only to be told nothing was solved and then to find out I could have to have it done again. With no explanation other than bad luck, heart rate spikes continue to plague Christopher, but now plays second only to the pain in his leg and a short-term limp. He'll soon return to work no different than when he left, and it could be months before doctors ask for a second try. But when they do... I'm going to say yes because I want to solve the problem. I want to get rid of this chest pain. And Christopher is joining us now to talk more about this procedure. I think, first of all, everyone wants to know why did this not work? So they tell me that there's a small chance that once they go in to do this surgery, you could either be under the medication to, they, they used to put you to sleep. I was on medication for six months leading up to all of this to stop this issue. They say any number of those reasons could cause the problem to be masked. So it's still there. We can see it on all of the EKGs that I've been strapped up to. And boy, have I been strapped to a few. Um, they just couldn't find it while they were in there. And they were in there for about an hour and a half looking around. All of this means I have to do it again. <laughs> and what, what did you think when you heard that you would have to go through this again? How disappointed were you? I was, uh, like I said in the story, I was defeated. I mean, it's, it's not even just a sense of disappointment. It's like I've gone through all of this. I just did seven uh, to eight days of recovery. You saw there was quite a bit of a limp, no more limp now. Um, but all of this, and I'm going to have to do it again, I, I felt awful. I mean, there's, there's no sure. way of coming out of that. I would imagine, though, having gone through it once, it might be a little easier knowing what to expect. Sure, I, I know what to expect at this point. You know, yeah. I know my leg is going to hurt for a little while. But, you know, the, the purpose of all of this, uh, beyond just telling this story, is not to look for anybody to say, oh, I feel so sorry for him. It's just for all those people out there who could be potentially feeling, you know, indigestion. I was taking uh, an antacid for for years before we could, you know, find out what the problem was. So if there's anybody out there who's having this serious problem, go out, get checked if you can. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I did and found out it was a problem. And it's a wake-up call for any condition. If there's been Absolutely. some type of symptom that you don't feel is right, that you haven't had in the past, that's not normal, go mm -hmm. see your doctor, I'm, I'm whether 20, it be this or something else. I'm 24 next month. It does not matter how old you are. It does right. not matter your age. Well, we're glad that you are on the path to hopefully solving <laughs> yeah. this problem. Yes, absolutely. Happy to be back to work. Well, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, Christopher.